Yeah, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Academy. In today's tutorial, we are going to be discussing about superstructural tech work. We are going to be work working on taking off for superstructural work. I'm really grateful for those of you that have subscribed and like our videos, and for those that have been checking up on me through my email, I'm, I'm eternally grateful. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to our channel and also click on the notification bell to get notified of subsequent videos. Now, in superstructural work, we have um, different work items, which are majorly divided into two, which is the block work and also the concrete work. Now, when we are dealing with the block work, we would need to first and foremost measure for block work and then we will now carry out opening adjustment. When I commence take off on this, I'm going to explain more in details. Now, if we are done dealing with block work, we need to move down to the concrete work. And the concrete work includes the concrete lintel, which are used to bridge the openings of doors and windows so that other subsequent block work can continue. And in this concrete lintel, we're going to be having a reinforcement because if you don't have a reinforcement, the concrete can just collapse at any time. So we'll be having a reinforcement and also would we'll measure for the form work that will be used to um, uh, start, serve as a mold for the um, casting of the concrete work. But if the work that is being constructed is not going to be um, having an institute concrete, then there will be no need for form work. Now, mind you, lintel is divided into two. We, we can actually have precast concrete lintel or we can have an institute concrete lintel. An institute concrete lintel are those concrete lintels that are casted on site. They are being poured, that is concrete work that is poured into a form work on the site. Why the precast concrete lintel is one that has been constructed away from the site and they are just imported in order to reduce the time rate for the construction work. So in today's video, we are going to be basing our attention on the block work calculation. I'm going to be releasing another sequel of this particular um, topic on superstructure, which is going to be the part two of superstructure. And in that part two, we'll be discussing concrete work intensively. So for block work, we are going to be dealing with it in this video. Don't go anywhere, stay with me. And also, if you're just new, subscribe to this channel and like our video if you know it has been helpful in your practice as a quantity surveyor or as a quantity surveying student. So let us commence with block work. Now, before I move down, this is a simple plan that I have designed myself. I just designed this so that we can actually deal with superstructural work because a lot of persons have been asking me to put down a video on superstructure. I'm sure a lot of students are, are actually facing their examination period, so they really want to see how they can deal with superstructural work before the exams. And that is why I just constructed this simple plan to help us understand <clears throat> the modalities of superstructure. From what we can see, we have our windows. This, this is just like a living room. So we have um, window one, just two of window one here. We have window two, three window two, and then we have our door one and then door two. And I've actually prepared a specification for that. So when we get to opening adjustment, I would enlighten us about this all the more. Now to measure your block work in superstructure, the only thing you need to do is to calculate the main guard of this, your plan here. <clears throat> that is all you need to do for your superstructural work. The first and foremost, the first thing you need to do in your measurements or in your taking off for superstructure is to calculate the main guard of the structure that you are given. Now from the look of things, I know my drawing is off point, but from the from, from the from the dimensioning, we can see that the entire wall, including the internal and the external, are given as two to five. Now because the internal internal wall and the external wall are two to five, I can calculate for the main guard and merge them together. But in a situation whereby the internal walls are different from the external walls, then I ought to calculate the main guard separately and leave them separately. Why I take off or I book for them separately. So for block work, the first thing to do is to calculate our main guard. And I'm sure this is already a simple um, procedure because we've been doing this over and over again in most of our, our videos. So to calculate the main guard, we need to start with our external the external gut. Now for the external gut, let us take a look at this plan. Now for the external gut, all we need to do is to pick our overall length and our overall length is given as 11,675. So this is our overall length, 11,675. And our overall width is given as 7,075. So I'll add them up. So I have zero, this is five, 
7, then I have 8, 1. So this is what we have. We have 18,750. Now I'm going to multiply this by 2. I hope you haven't forgotten the procedures. So we have 0, 0. This is 5 again. 16 plus 1. We have 17. And then we have it as 2. So all we have here is given as 20. 7,000. Am I doing this right? Sorry. This is 16, 17. Okay, here is going to be 3. Sorry for that. So we have 37,500. Now this is um, the value we've gotten. I haven't added these and these. Then we'll multiply it by 2. The next thing we need to do is to less our 4 corners. So I'm going to say less 4 by 2 by half of block thickness. And our block thickness given here is 2 to 5. So I have it as Two to five. If I multiply everything, this is nine hundred. So when I carry out this arithmetic, I have zero zero. This is fifteen minus nine. I have six six <coughs> three. So this is thirty six thousand six hundred. If you find anything that is wrong in this calculation for external guard, please kindly um, state it out in our comment box below. Now I haven't done this for your external guard. The next thing to do is to move down to our internal guard. And like I always say. Whenever you want to work on internal guards, the first thing to do is to label out your walls. Now, I can decide to pick this wall from this place to this place and call it my vertical wall. Then if I'm picking it straight from here to here, it means that my horizontal wall will start from here and stop here. So let me pick my vertical wall and call it V1. That is the distance from here to this place. And I'm going to pick this as my horizontal one. Now... Since I'm picking this as my V1, the V1 is going to be given as distance from this point to this point, which is given as this plus this plus this. Or I can say, pick this overall 7,075 and less 225 by 225. So let us get our V1. So for our total internal guards, for our total internal guards, now for our internal guards, we have V1 is given as now, since V1 commences from this point to this point, I can decide to pick this dimension plus this dimension plus this dimension. It's going to give me my overall V1. Mind you, we are not taking any note of spread when it comes to superstructure. The only thing you deal with is the exact dimension you see on the floor plan because what we are working on here is just the block work. So I'm going to pick our V1. So let me pick this dimension from here to here is 3200 so i have 3200 from here to here is 225 so i have 225 and then from this point to this point is given as 3200 then i have 3200 if i sum it up together this is 5 2 6 6 and that is going to give me the sum total of 6,625. This is our V1. Now, to get our H1, H1 is now calculated as a distance from this point to this point. And if you notice, the distance from this point to this point is already given as 4,800. So I'm going to bring down my H1 as 4,800. Okay, now we've gotten our V1 as 6,625 and our H1 as 4,800. So all we need to do is to sum it up together and then we'll be able to get our total internal GAT. So our total internal GAT is now given as 6,625 plus 4,000. 800. I have 5, 2, 14, 11. This is now our total internal guard. Now, having gotten the total internal guard and also our total external mean guard, all we need to do is to sum it up together and we'll get our total guard for this particular plan. So, I have my total mean guard as our total external guard is given as 36,000. 600 why our total internal is 11,425 if i add this up i have five i have two zero six plus one will give us seven plus one that's eight then i have 
four. Now this is now our total mean cards. We have five, two, zero, and this is eight for forty-eight thousand and twenty-five. Now this is the mean guard for this entire plan. I haven't gotten the mean guard. The next thing to do is to determine the height of your building, the height of your building structure. Now because of that, I actually produced an elevation. I actually produced an elevation for this plan. Now if you look at this elevation carefully, to analyze this elevation, we have um, a concrete facial here. Don't mind the roof structure. I just did a simple sketch so that we can actually work on what we have at hand. Now, I even did a door and window schedule myself. This is our D1. This is D1. The dimension of D1, that is the dimension of the door 1, is given as 2100 by 1200. That means the height from here to here is 21, and then the distance from here to here is given as 1, 2. This is for our door 1. Now, door 2 is not shown on this elevation, it's inside the building. And I can only show you door 2 by producing a section for this but that is going to take a lot of time and that is why i just worked on this so that we can carry out our calculation as fast as possible so dot two is given as 2100 by 900 and then we have our window one which is this window the biggest window for the living room is given as one five by one two sometimes it can be one five by one five sometimes they are even customized so the doors and the windows are not precise the sizes are different then we have our window 2, which is given as 1,200 by 1,200. Now, this is the elevation. From the elevation, you'll be able to get the height of your building. Now, if you look at this carefully, from this design, because I didn't provide any section, I will just say this clearly. Sometimes there are some buildings that always have what we call a concrete head course. I'm going to do a new video on superstructure where I'll bring up a complicated plan and show us most of these complicated designs that are found on... Um, on, on, on buildings and then we'll work on it but for this simple design let us assume that this house does not have a concrete and this thing overhead um, course so because of that our block work would end exactly at this point and if our block work end exactly at this point then the height of this building is given as a distance from here to this place which is 3150 now this place to this place is simply um, the distance covered by this sub substructure which include your concrete oversight and also your hardcore filling. And it is 450 for this plan. Sometimes it may be 600, some may even be 300. So just take note that your superstructure commences just above the oversight concrete down to this place, down to the, um, yes, down to the, the last course before your, um, your, what do you call it, your facial board or your concrete facial. Just take note of that. So the height of this building is given as 3,150. Sometimes you can determine your height from your section, so do not forget. Now, since I know that the height is given as 3,150, I already have all I need to do to carry out my booking for this structure. So the next step to do after calculating your main guard and determining the height of your building is to describe. And I told you that you can describe in any way you feel that it is fit for you. But make sure it is in accordance to the standard as stated in the SMM, the standard method of measurement. And if you're in Nigeria, it should be in accordance to the BESMM. That is the Building and Engineering Standard Method of Measurement. So let us stick to that idea. Let's describe. We have walls of hollow sand crate block two to five mm thick laid in stretcher bond with cement and sand mortar. Of one ratio six. I am through with my description. Don't forget, it, your wall can either be laid, your block can either be laid in stretcher bond. And for those that are staying in the UK, most of the time they make use of Flemish or English bond. But in most parts of Africa, the kind of um, block work that is being constructed is sand crate block. And so most times the structure is always constructed using the stretcher bond pattern. So take note of that. Now, this is the description walls 
hollow sand grain block 225 mm thick laid in stretcher bond with cement and sand mortar of 1 ratio 6. Now, I haven't done this description. All I need to do is to book. Remember that your block work is measured in meter square. So the block work in superstructure is not any different. It's also measured in meter square. So I'll have it as the entire main guard, which is 48 point zero two making it zero three because it's zero if i approximate this five is zero three by the height which is three point one five now with this i have measured for this block work now remember that when i was doing this i i considered the entire gut here i took i took note of the entire dimension in this plan that includes the doors and the windows opening but whenever this block work is to be laid, as you can see even in this elevation, when block work was laid, this part of the windows and this door were not having any block work because they are free opening. It simply means that this space that we actually assumed we're having block work by taking note of the entire gut, we are expected to remove or deduct this opening. By extension, if I carry out a simple sketch, let's say this is our building, Let's say this is our building. Now, this is what we have here. By getting the overall main guard from the plan, it simply means that we included these doors that are found here and the windows as well. That means the block work is going to cover this entire area. But in reality, we are not going to be having any block work around these windows. Neither are we going to be having any block work around these doors. So by, by, by virtue of this, we are expected to deduct this area that we know we have covered during the block work measurement. So when we took note, when we took this, um, when we booked down this particular dimension, 48, which is the entire main guard, by the height, it covered everything, including the door work. So all we need to do, just know that you need to deduct this window opening and you also need to deduct this wall or this door opening and also remember that above this window there is going to be a lintel and above this door there is going to be a lintel and this lintel are also concrete work they are not block work and it means that we ought to deduct this piece that we have actually included in our block work calculation from the entire um, value that we've booked already so i haven't said that Whenever you are done measuring for your, your block work this way, the next thing to do is to carry out adjustment. We need to say deduct. All you need to say is to deduct block work as before described. Now we are going to be deducting this block work we've described. We are going to be deducting it from the space where these doors and these windows are. And if you start with your door and window, it is very simple. Just start with it. Pick door one. So I'm going to say the dot block work as before described. So I'll start with door one. What is the dimension of door one? Like I said, look at this door one. Even in your exams or in any project you are handling, you must be given a door and window schedule. And that is, but even without being given, you can actually formulate some standard measure and this measurement for doors. So from our own plan, our doors and windows should do speculate that our door 1 is given as 2100 by 1 2, door 2 is 2100 by 900 and so on and so forth. So when you are done measuring for your block work, all you need to do is to deduct these doors and windows, then we can now handle Intel afterwards. So if I say the dot block work as before described, I will start with door 1. The dimension of door 1 is 21 by 1 2, so I will book it down, 2.10 by 1.20 i am done with door one i'll move to door two the dimension of dot our uh, dimension is given as 2100 by 900 so i'm going to book it as 2.10 by 0 0.90 that is 21 by 0 0.900 and if you look at our plan carefully you realize that we have two dot two for this room and for this room so since they are two dot two i'm going to multiply this opening by two because we have two dot two here now having done this we are done with deduction for opening on doors uh doors so we're going to be moving down to window i'll start with window one for window one our dimension is given as one five by one two so i'm going to book it as one point five zero by one point two zero and from our plan, 
you can see that our window one is giving us two numbers one two so i'll multiply window one by two i'll now move down to the next one which is window two i hope the procedures are very easy you can actually let me know if there's any challenge you're having with what i've done so far in the comment box below for window two we have our dimension from this specification as 1200 by 1200 so i'm going to book window two 1.20 by 1.20 now from our floor plan we have one two three window two so i'm multiplying this dimension by three haven't done this i am done adjusting the openings for doors and windows so automatically what this means is that we are going to be whenever we want to produce a bill of quantity for this particular um, aspect of, of of measurement after we have gotten this the total of this area in which our block work would cover then i would have to look for the total area of this by multiplying this when i square this square each of these dimension i'll sum them up together and subtract them from the total area given here by so doing i would have adjusted space for our doors and windows that will be found in the wall of the building and that is the essence of doing this deduction and like i said earlier i told us that when we have this like the when we have these um elevations it gives us an insight of what we are measuring for what we measured for is the block work and now we've adjusted for doors and windows but we haven't done so for our lintel because the space covered by the lintel above this place is simply um, not going to be included in our block work and that is why we ought to deduct lintel as well in this place now just a simple illustration as i've shown you in this in this particular structure like i said the lintel is going to be this way as you can see now take note of this if this is our door this is our door our lintel is going to be projecting outward this way now the space given from this place to this place is what we refer to as the lintel projection so automatically if the dimension of your door is given as 1200 by let's say 900 or by whatsoever this 900 is the length from this place to this place why this 2100 is the length from this place to this place now automatically to get the length of my lintel i need to make use of this 900 then i would add and I would add this projection to this 900. Now take note of this that the standard um, the, the standard quantity of this projection is either is between 150 to 300 mm. Now for some lecturers or for some for some for some case studies, a lot of persons make use of let's say 225 mm, which is half of the block thickness since sorry and half of your of the length of your block so some people use 150 mm because our block thickness is 150 mm some people use 225 because the block thickness is 225 so whichever the case may be ensure that the projection the length from this place to this place ensure that the length you are using is between 150 to 300 mm for this sake of our tutorials we are going to be making use of our projection the length from here to here as 225 that is what we're making use of so like i said after you have deducted after you must have deducted for your doors and windows you need to deduct lintel because lintel is not block work lintel is a concrete work so you have to exclude it from the block work and that is the last thing you'll be doing on that block adjustment so i'm going to say i'm going to say deduct are going to also deduct concrete lintel now for the concrete lintel you only have a concrete lintel at the doors and windows that is the only place where you have a concrete lintel the essence of this lintel is to bridge the opening between the doors and the windows so that we can continue other block work above the doors and windows now take note that lintel is not this is not um this is not a structural material it doesn't it doesn't transfer load just the way beams and column does although we know lintel is a type of beam but it does not transfer load to the ground or it does not function as columns and beams function all it does is to bridge that door opening so this is not a guarantee that it is going to reinforce your building or the structure with the kind of strength that 
columns and beams does so take note of that so for our lintel adjustment we need just the way we fix our doors and windows that's how we pick our lintel adjustment so i'm going to start with door one now door one from our from the explanation i've given these are the entire length these are the lengths that we need this second length not the first one the first one deals with the height of this of the, of this of the openings but we're going to be using the length along the opening so the door one is going to span from here to here which is 1200 so i'll pick them gradually so i'm going to say door one i'll pick the length 1200 so i would add the projection i've just shown us so i'll add projection which is two by two to five so i'll have it as 450 if i add this i have zero this is five six one this is now the value of our door one so if i'm deducting mind you before i proceed um this is this this is a sample of our lintel this is a sample of our lintel this is how a lintel looks like you see we have reinforcement bar in the lintel and this thing we see here is the link this is the link that links this reinforcement this reinforcement bar together sometimes your reinforcement bar may be three it can be triangular so you can have it this way in which you have one here one here and one here it may be four it can even be six depending on the kind of structure you are trying to um, work with so for the lintel this is what we are using we're making use of four reinforcement bar now we are, we are going to be having our projection yes we're having our link in this reinforcement bar that is certain now what we've just calculated for is the length from here to here that is what we have calculated for the length of this lintel from this place to this place now we also need to get our dimension given from here to here and a dimension given from here to here now let me create a drawing here don't, don't, pardon me i'm going to do this as fast as possible now let me say this is a cross section of our lintel this is how the cross section is going to be like Now we have one reinforcement bar here, we have one here, we have one here and another one here. This is now called, this is the link. This is called the link, some people call it the stirrups. Link or the stirrups. Now this is our main bar. And they can be of any diameter also. Now the essence of doing this is because sometimes if you, are, if you are working on a particular structure in which your block thickness is 2 to 5, then this is going to be your length, which is what we have just calculated. Now the width is going to be given as the block thickness. Do not forget, your width is always the block thickness, and that is given as 2 to 5 mm. If your block thickness is 150, it should be 150 mm. Then the height, some people make use of 150 mm as height, but sometimes it is always 2 to 5, which is the same height with your block work. So this can be 2 to 5 mm. So in other words, from this, this cross section, we have this, meaning the thickness here is 2 to 5 mm, and then the height is 2 so the height is 2 to 5 mm. Now, from this explanation of what we have as our lintel, whenever I'm going to be booking for the lintel, remember your lintel is always booked in meters cube. But when you are carrying out adjustment for lintel in block work, which is booked in meter square, you are only going to be considering the length from here to here, and then the height from here to here, because your block work is booked in meter square. So remember, this is all what you need to do. Get the entire length of each of the lintel, and then the height of the lintel should be determined by yourself. Whenever you are working with 2 to 5 mm or 150 mm um, block work, just know that the height of your lintel is always given as the height of the block. And whether the block is 2 to 5 or 150 mm, whether it's 6 inches or 9 inches, their heights are always 2 to 5. So the height of your lintel. Okay, so um, I haven't said this. We've already gotten the length of our lintel. Now, like, like I said, the height of our lintel is always given as 2 to 5. But sometimes, it, some, um, depending on the location of where you're studying from, 
um, your, your lecturers may decide to make use of the height of your lintel as 150 and some people may still stick to the 225. It, whichever the case may be, just know that, just get to know your height and if you don't know the height of your lintel, stick to the standard 225 mm for whether it's 6 inches or 9 inches block and then you work with it. So all you need to do is to get the length. And like I said, the length of your, the length of your, of your lintel is always given as the smallest length of your door. So we now have it as one two, and this is now one thousand six fifty. So I'll be booking one point six five by zero point two three. Now I know somebody may be confused. Where did I get zero point two three from? Like I said, if you look at this carefully, I need to pick the length from here to here, which is what we've calculated one point six five, and the distance from here to here, the height of the lintel. Is given as 225. If I convert it to meters, it's going to give me 0 0.225, approximately 0 0.23. So this is the height of your lintel. Don't forget, you are doing adjustment for block work, and block work is measured in meter square. So your lintel adjustment is always in meter square. Only when you are measuring for your lintel, your concrete lintel properly, that is when you measure as concrete in meters cube. So this is an adjustment. Now we'll move down to the second one, which is D2. Now for D2, the dimension of our D2 is given as 2100 by 900. So um, we're going to be making use of 900. Don't forget, like I said, we're always going to be using, we're going to be using this. This is what we'll be using in our dimension. We'll be using all these dimensions here, not this one. These ones have to do with the height of the doors and windows so we're making use of this one two nine hundred one two one two so let us do this as fast as possible so that we don't waste much of our time we have 900 i'm going to add projection and i've explained what a projection is we have two by two two five which will give us 450 and this is going to be zero five three so i have it as 1350 i'll book it down 1.35 by the height of your lintel 0 0.23 i'll move down now multiply this by two because we have two dot two so there'll be two lintels in this place and that's why i'm multiplying it by two so i'm done with those i'll move to our windows for window one window one is given as one five by one two and i'm going to be making use of the one two like i said because i told us that we'll be making use of so if I have if I have window one as one five by one two, take note I'll be using one two. If I have the one as two one by nine hundred, I'll be using two uh, nine hundred. If I have the one as two one by one two, I'll be using one two. Take note of that. So one two. I'll always add my projection because without the projection, the lintel will not stand. It will fall. So I'll have it as four fifty. This is zero five six one this is our window one and i'm going to book it down 1.65 by 0 0.23 now window one is given as two numbers i have window one in two numbers so multiply by two and last but not the least we have window two and window two we know dimension is one two by one two so i'm going to be using this one two so it's going to be one two i'll add projection 2 by 225 and this is going to give me 450 i have 0 0.561 and then i'll book it as 1.65023 then i'll multiply it by this 1 2 3 so multiplied by 3 if i've done this i've actually finished up my block work for superstructure so don't forget whenever you multiply or you square all these values we have here and then we end up squaring all the values we have here we are going to put them up together and deduct them from the value we have here and that this will give us the total block work that is found in this structure that we've actually ascertained so i hope you understand everything we've done for block work don't forget to like this video subscribe to this channel also share it with your friends and your classmates and click on the notification bell to get notified for subsequent videos and if you have any problem with all i've done in this video kindly leave it at the comment box below i'm going to attend to it i'll reply it and i'm going to be creating another sequel for this particular superstructural work and don't go anywhere just stay stick to this channel and you'll be learning more about taking off practices in quantity surveying field and just to give us a recap before i go 
Remember that when we dealt with block work, the first thing we did was to get our overall main guard, then we multiplied it by the height. That included the windows and the doors. And after we've booked for it, that is the total area that the block work will cover. We ought to remove the openings that is bridged by these doors and windows. And that is why we deducted for block work. Don't forget, you need to deduct your block work and window directly. So I picked the dimensions directly. And after we did that, we also need to deduct for the area that is covered by the lintel in this building because lintel is concrete work and not block work. That is what we did here. And after we have done that, we are now through with the block work measurement for superstructure. That is it for taking up our superstructural work. Thank you very much for your time. Stay tuned to our channel as we continue to bring you exciting episodes in the quantity surveying um, practice. Have a nice day.